Colorfulism by Jace Isham. This is not a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain, and I guess this one is too. For more information, or to volunteer, please send me a message on Facebook. Bravo, sweetheart. October 4, 2018. Deep fakes will doom humanity. The age of truth as a possibility will become the age of truth as laughable until we are destroyed. There is no justice. Charlie Manson died on my birthday. Buy ammo. Learn how to make it, too. Mechanized animals will be able to smell the fear inside of you. Buy a flip phone for three numbers only and put it in a safe. Your tattoos will give you away, so get rid of them while you can. Making money in 2018 is like hopping over a flaming weed while your favorite old western plays 16 billion times in one second due to the unprecedented capacity of a super server, similar to the human brain while dreaming. Tax returns? This dog had three eyes and stared at me like I had just gotten out of a dungeon filled with Condi Rice lookalikes and bad milk. It barked at me until I cried. I woke up in the rain and didn't know what time it was, but I remembered I hadn't called you back about the war in which we must gloriously march on. The prize is haunted candy money, not that inflated disgrace that the Federal Reserve deals out. Who are these hacks? Who do they think I am? I'm a man. I can't read, but I can fold your heart into the shape of most Asia Minor countries. Think of the first presentation you ever gave in school. The first show-and-tell or modest second-grade research project. How did you really feel? How did the teacher look at you? Because a single drop of sweat is enough to grease the cogs of the revolution. Bravo, sweetheart. On the death of George H.W. Bush. December 4, 2018. I took a walk with George H.W. Bush on May 28, 2003, in College Station, Texas. He told me something like, If people stop believing, believing stops people. Since then I've been trying to figure out political power, and what it would take to make you wish you had voted for me after an intentional, calculated loss. I'd have stacked everything against you, and made you thirsty for blood, just to see myself almost flying above you all for a split second before I hang. George, as I'm entitled to call him, had an affinity for giving me these kinds of ambitions, and I'd like to thank the Jewish state of Israel as well. Hatikva has made my toes tingle for years, and I feel stronger because of it. We should all get back together sometime on the other side, and it won't be long. We'll take the dogs of doom for a walk and pick up their poop with a Kroger bag. You don't say that someone struggles with a lion if they passively allow the lion to eat their face off. You have to fight. You have to eat back. The very thought of that kind of effort from you makes the fluid in my ears rumble. Put some ass into it, boy. Ain't much time left. The Warp of Hope January 29, 2019 one time I met a street preacher downtown, but he was packing up. I followed him home, and the first thing he did was get down and pray. He prayed stuff like, God, let couples make more love, and let people stop being so narrow-minded. That spider could light a 60-watt bulb just with his words. I want to grow up to be a dictator so I can sit in a cotton candy chair for as long as I want. We should wear clothes made out of flowers so there's always something lovely on you in addition to your face. People voted for Obama because of love, but understanding hasn't come yet. Bombs are not love. Civilization is not necessarily love, but we can weave love through it and cause a warp of hope. We can ride the warp with all the creatures of the earth. When people start killing social justice warriors, we can't be surprised and we can't make excuses for either side but we have to put victims in crates and secret tunnels for safety anyway. The rescuers who weren't even on their side will be the story characters because they were acting in love. Don't get discouraged and make a plan. Account for those who are dear to you. Everyone and their mama has a story. 
Don't make your peace with limited truisms and the black and white. A Revolutionary Love Letter, or Part 2 of Bravo Sweetheart. March 21, 2019. When I would take tests in school, I would eliminate answers on multiple choice questions. Every answer but the one I chose had a slash through the letter. But when I encountered correct answers that were all of the above or both A and C, I couldn't bring myself to eliminate the individual A or C since they were technically correct. Then I had to deal with the trauma of a different aesthetic of pencil lead on said question. The teacher threatened to blend me up and spread the mess on the walls. Sorry I got mad when you told me you had the same dream as me about speaking Spanish to those blue cats in the meadow. I was upset because I knew that meant you saw the guy who had pink eyes and was riding a mosquito out of the bank. I had always wanted to be that kind of guy, and even though the pills have helped a lot, seeing that in a dream felt like an insult from my subconscious. I felt weak. But when I called you that rainy morning, hours before dawn, and I heard your voice concurring with every revolutionary platitude, I knew my true weapon was not the AR on my back, but whatever that thing is between us. Mistletoe Boulevard had never been such a happy place as right then. We could lose the war, and that moment would be all the victory I needed. Just so it's on the record, and I'm sorry for the language, but I sent you a text that said, The man with the mustache who shot himself at that fucking diner said that I should listen to Robert Johnson's complete recordings on my way to the city. It says you saw it, but you didn't text me back. He had a reason beyond mere taste, and I find myself, one, thinking I won't ever decipher the message, but two, feeling that I'm bound to. Because that's also how love and desperation work sometimes. I'll always remember how he sipped his coffee and winked at us right before he did it. It was the worst thing I'd ever seen. In a twisted way, thinking about that day makes me miss you even more. Last night I caught a big fish for you, but I couldn't see him when I first reeled him in because I had to watch five ads play on my hook and give the pond my email in order to keep him. I hope you like him. The guys who make drugs on Lancaster have these secret phones that spill lemonade when any number not in their contacts calls. My uncle tried to make one, and he ended up burning his finger into a box. I promise to be back, as do, in three weeks. I shall hold you as I never have. Send some revolutionary leaflets to your relatives. As a token of my affection, I am sending, along with the fish, the head of a counter-revolutionary with the eyeballs in the mouth. Uncle Joe to you. March 24, 2019. I went to hear Ben Shapiro give a lecture at the university. Predictably, I rode the wave of agreement and disagreement throughout his entire engagement. At one point, he spoke of the evils of communism and used the phrase, Stalin the murderer, when an elderly man, presumably a World War II vet, slowly stood up and interrupted, Young man, that's Uncle Joe to you. In the lobby, I was able to approach that man and ask him to send me some lo-fi, grainy, echoey huapangos from the 50s that had been reprocessed to the point that they are pitched about 40 cents sharp, and luckily he also had Spotify Premium. When me and Archibald used to paint pictures for the city, we were getting paid in wet t-shirts, not money. They gave us t-shirts that were soaked with water. We were working for them, painting pictures, and they didn't give us money. They gave us t-shirts that were wet. They would hand us dripping wet t-shirts at the end of the week. They didn't pay us in actual money for the pictures we were painting for them. I painted this beautiful picture of the mayor's elbow, and my boss congratulated me by making it rain, which I considered a cruel joke. Billy in the Nonstick Pan, April 9, 2019. 
I had a dream that Toby Harmon had his own one-man abolitionist society, and there was a tweet from its Twitter account basically announcing it, and specifically the fact that it had an inventory of exactly one sign. The tweet ended with, Jaw. Who were those guys who were running out of your house when I came over to bring you that glue? Who was the one that got his foot stuck in that hole, so his hair jumped off his head and ran with the rest? Who was the guy with the pink pants? Who were those guys? I used to go to a night class about how to harness the energy you get from beholding beauty and converting it to a meaningful output. One night I interrupted the class and confessed that I had just thought a profoundly anti-beauty thought and asked the class to beat me with the bats. They beat me with the bats and I lied there, suffering, bleeding out of my nose and my eyes. I'm sorry, class. Beauty forever. Only beauty. Remember that abandoned house on George Bush that we used to see every time we'd walk from that neighborhood over to Kyle for Yale practice? Last Saturday night, I went over there to see Billy. He handed me a notebook and started exhaustively, intensively, sweatily explaining the meaning of se in Spanish grammar until like 6.30 in the morning. What the heck, Billy? You made me miss church because I was so tired. But y'all will appreciate this little story. One time, Billy bought a regular nonstick pan and said he was going to treat it like a cast iron. The first time he oiled it and put it in the oven on high heat, I just stood there confused about why he was doing this. He opened the oven, and of course the plastic handle had melted off. He said, So it is with this generation. Wyatt gave away the mystery, but I forgave him. We are capsules of love and electricity, and I was standing at the end of the hallway, full of hope, when he jumped into that piano. Hashtag brosies for life. The Plea for Help April 10, 2019 Save us from the rats. I'm eating orange slices in a box underneath the factory. They're gonna come in here and sew whistles to my ankle, and I'm afraid it will work because hashtag brosy gang doesn't have enough courage to put on the maroon suits and come rescue me. Yet. Confession. Back in the day, every time I put on my iCast shirt, I would mutter, Rep the Coalish, bish. But not in a while. When Jessica gave me that homeopathic remedy, I threw up a copy of The Kingdom of God is Within You by Tolstoy. Doesn't that prove that it at least does something? Where's the toilet at your house? I'm not at your house right now. Racism, pineapples, milk, fire. Come on, brosy. The Gratification Point April 13, 2019 When you have a sweet tooth, you might gratify it by eating candy. There's a gratification point. But when you're just standing there beholding beauty... Where's the gratification point? You may never meet the artist behind the song and talk about what it means to them. You may never marry the attractive woman or man. You may never build your house in the countryside. But you can behold all this beauty and receive from it without that. I was driving down the highway and I saw a man in the shoulder doing jumping jacks upside down and someone sitting in a lawn chair behind him eating a grapefruit. I pulled over to pop in a piece of gum and sent a text to Russell Hunter about integrating empathy into incendiary activism. In response, he sent me a photo of a price tag on a t-shirt. We cannot vote our way to worldwide love, but I'm starting to think we can sheetrock our way there. When you call out numbers to your partner and you look down and see him quickly glitch and fade away like in a video game, but you ignore it and keep working... That's hood revolution unity among differences victory. The guy who gave me that lemonade told me a story about how he was running from his cousin inside this huge house, and when he finally got caught, his cousin pinned him down and whispered, hashtag kitchen goals. But they were in the living room? 
on the burning of Notre Dame, April 15, 2019. I don't think I've thought about Notre Dame since 6.23 p.m. on June 20, 2016, but I'm thinking about it now and I'm sad, because it's pretty freaking terrible to think about. Wow, that thing was so old and beautiful and haunting in the most perfect way. Remember that picture from when they bombed the shad out of Dresden and there's that statue overlooking it? This is that same vibe. I hate politics, even the good guys. I feel like they get in the way of things like going to an obscure mall and trying to speak Indonesian, then running out as quickly as you can, peeing your pants. That's a nasty thought, but it's where our priorities should be. In fact, let me tell y'all something real quick. I had to go to the DPS today, and as I walked out, I loudly said, this place smells like poop, just for the rush. When I got outside, there was a man praying for France, or Paris, or whatever. We struck up a conversation, but it was like his speech was dubbed because his mouth didn't sync up with what he was saying. Anyway, we just talked about socks and gum and stuff like that. Now I want to invent a new kind of Ferris wheel that makes your skin turn green. Have you ever seen someone fly before? April 18, 2019 Of course, in principle, I'm with the idea of all the roads being private and thus different from one another. But I don't think there's enough room for all that. So I'm just tired of trying to sort through all that. I hate politics, because one time I had to go to court about a ticket, and in line there was this guy in front of me who had his name legally changed to The People. He asked me, have you ever seen someone fly before? And I think he meant something fudged up by that. The version of El Siete Leguas by Charo Avitia and Pepe Villas Mariachi has a crazy effect on me that I've been experiencing a lot lately. Pancho Villas, having been a terrible person, even in perversely terrible ways, doesn't ruin a song like that. It just soundtracks the terribleness in a really impactful way. Brosy, I'm against etching hashtags into stone. And I don't even want to feel anything anymore. Just do the right thing. But I know that's not how we're made. We're like the kittens that your elbow converted to a compromised version of Islam back before you realized smelling good was important and would make girls stop running away from you. How's that going, bro? What did people in 1905 even do? There wasn't any fun stuff. I'm about to change the situation. That Pop-Tart that gave you a bunch of acne? Give me it. I'm going to throw it in a volcano on May 13th. And there's that temptation to move out to a cabin in the woods. But I'm glad I found you here in the city. And I'll be glad to die from the pollution and get stuck in traffic all the time since your mom lives down the street and our jobs are here. Hashtag pray for Zimbabwe. Billy and the Trump Rally. April 22, 2019. One morning in high school, when we said the pledge... I accidentally said, I pledge allegiance to the ground, and only now am I concerned that I may have entrapped myself by my words, and I actually do owe allegiance to the ground. That was four years ago, so I have piled up a fence like you have been doing for the 68 years that you haven't remembered to fix that guy's window. Oh crap, you haven't thought about it since then, have you? I smuggled some antidepressants to Billy because I don't know what else to do. He thought he'd basically save the world by blasting narco corridos in the parking lot at a Trump rally. I'd ask him, hey man, you want to go do some activism? And he'd be like, what do you mean? When you go on a walk tomorrow, pick me up some pie. I need to mail some pie to the sky. Why? Because I'm going to die. Digging up pictures behind the outhouse. June 6, 2019. 
I was riding in a van down I-35 with Josh Malone and Jeremy Brown. We were listening to Mama Said by the Shirelles. We got pulled over because Josh was whistling the bass line. That squirrel sure loves music, and sue me, but I always check his wrist for the triangle tattoo to make sure it's really him. But I care less now about that, and more about bargaining with unreality with a sense of humor. No one knows me more than the people down in the hole, which was our destination. Even though I disagree with a lot of their philosophy, I've seen them sowing columns of love into the deep earth. I saw a man's face drip into a cup, which he proceeded to drink. He said, fuck divorce, and I just laughed, because I agree. But I spend more time whispering that to myself than saying it out loud and making fun of divorce instead of arguing against divorce and remarriage. We're not in a hash-things-out, unity-is-coming day. We're in a everything's-a-gimmick, laugh-your-ass-off-at-it, but work-hard-for-your-great-grandchildren day. When people love each other, there are professionals in their hearts on a constantly connected phone line, like two corporate offices. When too many of those professionals can't pay their mortgage, get addicted to meth, or watch a lot of porn, divorce happens. So what? See an R-rated movie by yourself? Buy cigarettes? Buy a beer? Have sex? Deny the Holocaust? Not necessarily. I'm more interested in digging up pictures behind the outhouse, climbing ladders to other planets, bringing dead people back to life by repeatedly calling their old phone number, suing my enemies with some beautiful lawyer, burying the hatchet, if you will. We're on our way, clown cobs. Rise up and pray. Luke 22, verse 46.